Hi, this is Chris Legaspi, and in this video, we're going to do some shading techniques with pen, marker, and colored pencil. Now here's a look at the finished shaded drawing. Now this drawing was a demonstration for a class on movie posters, and in that line of work, you have to be very fast and very accurate and be able to get realistic shaded drawings very quickly and that's uh, what I'm going to demonstrate in this video today and make sure you watch until the end and I will reveal the secret to how you can make this process easier on yourself and you can get uh, more realistic looking shaded drawings and have it done quickly and get more consistent results. Okay so how do we get there? Well the first step is to come up with a game plan. And when I come up with a game plan, the first thing I do is analyze the values. So I take a moment to look at the, uh, the reference here that I'll be using, look at the image that I want to draw, and I want to just kind of um, analyze uh, the values. And the key here is the secret is to limit the amount of values. Now, when we look at a reference, the untrained eye will see, you know, millions and infinite levels of value. But um, if you want your pictures to be, uh, to be more realistic, more accurate, and you want to make this process easier on yourself, the, the key is to limit your values. So I'm going to try to group the values that I see into as few values as possible. And in this reference has some very nice uh, value composition already. The clear darks here in the shadow that I see in the clear uh, half tone. I'm going to group his skin his face and his hands into a one value shape that'll be some sort of half tone. The jacket will be a light and then highlights and dark accents will fill out um, the value composition there and add, help me add some form and some contrast. And the reason why you want to do this is um, not only is it helps you get more realism, um, but it helps you become faster and more efficient because what we're doing here is we're designing and that's the key here. Um, you know, the, the untrained eye, the amateur artist, when they start to draw, they want to copy everything they see, kind of like a camera. But, but the trained eye, the expert, the master, the professional, the craftsman, they design, they analyze what they see, and then they design in their mind. Um, that way they become more faster and more efficient and more professional. Okay, so step one, define the shadow shape. And here I've already did the drawing in pencil. And what I'm doing now is I'm just going to go over in pen to quickly define the shadow shape, go over the pencil drawing that I've already done. And the first shadow shape that I want, or the first shape that I want is, is that dark shape. Remember earlier I came up with a game plan and I grouped all of the shadows and dark shapes into one, one shape, one mass. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm just defining it uh, in pen. And the reason why I'm using uh, pen is because um, uh, I just like the look and I wanted the more graphic looks. And one thing I like about ballpoint pen is that um, you can go very light to the touch and produce a light line. Even though it's still ink, it's still permanent. You know, it's still a very faint and light line. So it does kind of mimic uh, charcoal or pencil a little bit. And I just like the look. And the paper I'm using here is a, uh, a tone paper sketchbook. It's a Strathmore. So this tone will come in handy when I want to um, get into the light halftone shape. So I'm going to speed up the video here from time to time. And I'm basically just going over the pencil, the pencil drawing that I've already done, just to give me a nice crisp shape in pen. And this is going to set me up for the next step where I am going to fill the shadow shape. Okay, now I am going to fill in my shadow shape. So um, here I'm going to use a marker, and this is a Sharpie marker. Now I, um, I just like Sharpie markers because they're easy to find and they're relatively inexpensive, but you can use any type of art marker. I recommend Prismacolor marker or um, Copic. Those are two uh, marker brands I recommend. Uh, but here my, my main goal is just to fill in the shadow shape that I've already defined in the previous step with pen. And what this does is it gives me my first uh, separation of light and shadow. It'll give me my first read 
as through the light and shadow pattern. It'll kind of give me the direction of where light is coming from. So this establishes uh, the lighting pretty much, this stage. Uh, so I'm going to start with the, uh, here I'm starting with the smaller shapes in the face, and then I'm going to move my way down uh, to the hands and to the body. And um, as I'm doing this too, I'm also being very, be very careful. I mean, you can't erase this, so you do got to take your time. I know the video is sped up quite a bit, but I'm actually being very careful and deliberate. And one of the, one of the tips, one of the pro tips is you want to make your tone nice and even. So here I'm using a, the, uh, a very flat and even stroke, and I'm going in the same direction, so it kind of unifies my tone. And I don't want too many uh, big gaps or big ugly gaps or ugly strokes. You want to be slow, deliberate, um, and clean, because you want that tone to be nice and flat and nice and even so it doesn't distract from your drawing, because it's the shadow shape, so it should be nice and smooth. Okay, next I'm going to fill in the half tone here, or the mid-tone. In this case, uh, I grouped his uh, skin into one value mass, value shape, and that will be um, what I'm going to use here. Um, this step, this, I'll be doing this with a colored pencil. I'm using a Prismacolor Black. This is a very thin, it's a type of Prismacolor that uh, has a harder lead. Uh, but you can use... Uh, ordinary Prismacolor as well, and I'll use that later. So I'm just going to go carefully go through the shapes I see in his face, uh, in his hands, and um, um, also here I'm also softening the edge between the shadow and the light. So it kind of helps soften uh, that transition, you know, so it doesn't seem so, uh, so hard and graphic. So it help, helps me, gives me some little bit of form. And here I'm also leaving a little bit of the light halftone of the paper for some of the highlight. So luckily this paper is toned and already has a nice value established for me. So here I'm going through the shapes uh, in the hand, doing a combination of both, uh, softening the edge and putting down a nice even tone of halftone for my halftone shape. Okay, step four. Now I'm going to the light shape and um, this is where the tone paper comes uh, in, in handy here um, and why I decided to use this tone paper because the tone paper gives me a nice, beautiful, light half tone, and next to all the, the darks, the shadow, and the half tone of his skin, the, this jacket looks, looks, uh, looks great. It works. The tone paper works as a light half tone value. And all I'm really doing is two things at this stage. One, I'm using my colored pencil to help um, soften the coarse shadow edge number one, you know, and add a little bit of tone to the folds and the wrinkles there to help them, help them, uh, you know, look more like folds and wrinkles. And then I'm also using some shading techniques, some hatching techniques here to uh, add some texture and, um, you know, using a variety of techniques. That's a great tip is using a variety of techniques is a quick and simple way to suggest material, and that's, that's the key word, suggest here. Okay, step five is the highlights and dark accents. So now I'm gonna go and use a white colored pencil, and this is a Prismacolor pencil. And this one is a, a color race, which is also made by Prismacolor, it's just a bit harder. So it's not as bright, white, and, and intense, so I get a little bit more detail. So I just go through the highlight shapes that I see um, in his forehead. In this case, um, the lighting in this reference here is stage lighting. So it's, uh, you know, this hard uh, rim lights cast from behind. And that's, you can see that clearly in the back of his head there. And, and a, a hard front light, which is showing up on his forehead. And I'll go, go first I go through the smaller shapes um, in the face and then uh, small shapes in the hands as well. So the hands will be a focal point as well. So I got to put some highlights there. And then the last thing I want to do is kind of go through the uh, the jacket. Now I don't want to make it too bright, but just adding a little bit of touch of highlight at the jacket, what that does is it helps kind of round and model the form. So, you know, kind of rounds the the cylinder form of, of, the, of the jacket sleeves especially. And also, you know, put in some key highlights at, uh, at that microphone there so that helps that microphone uh, pop forward. That's a real nice uh, way to get um, eye flow there into that area. 
And now what I'm doing here is using the dark accents. And here I'm using a Prismacolor. This is a black Prismacolor. And I'm just kind of going through the little, little areas that uh, little cracks and crevices. These are called occlusion shadows. And this just helps me kind of kind of punch in the shadow. And you know, because the marker is not a pure black, I'm able to kind of layer blacks, which is a really nice and quick way to add nice, strong, contrasty dark accents. And the Prismacolor goes goes really black, especially you know when you when you use it with layers. So it's a really nice way to get uh, a dark accents. And so this this all this step does gives me less bit of detail um, with these dark accents. Okay, here's a look at the finished drawing. So let's review. First, step one, start with the game plan. And for me, game plan really means just to, to observe and analyze the value shapes. You don't want to copy every single value. You want to be very strategic about it. And you want to be able to design um, the values that you shade and render so you make you more efficient. And it's really, you know, coming up with a nice, clear value composition right from the start so that you kind of have a clearly defined roadmap or game plan for the values that you want to, uh, to introduce into your drawing. And then step two, define your value shape. So I like to start uh, with the dark shadow shape in this case. So that shadow shape was really nice and clear in the reference. So it helped me to clearly define uh, the shadow shape. In this case, I use pen. And then step three, fill the shadow shape. And here I use the marker, but you can use uh, pencil, but uh, or any marker. I use I use Sharpie here. This gives me a nice, uh, you know, making sure to have a nice even tone, so that my shadow stays nice and flat and recedes, and is and the tone is nice and clear. And then step four: define the half tones and the lights. Here um, I used colored pencil to define the half tones in Dave Chappelle's uh, face and his hands. So I grouped that into a half tone shape and the lights. Um, because I started with the tone paper that had a nice light halftone value, I was able to, to use that, just the base value of the paper, as the light shape. In this case, that was his jacket. And finally, step five, to finish off our pen and marker shaded drawing, I used, uh, added the highlights and dark accents using, uh, in this case, a white colored pencil and a black colored pencil. Uh, highlights um, help to turn and model the form and add eye flow and focal points and dark accents help to add depth into the shadow and also add little uh, nice accents uh, in the shadow to give my drawing that little bit of extra polish and finish. Okay, that's the end of this video. I want to thank you for watching. If you like this video and if you like my work, visit my website at www.drawwithchris.com slash subscribe. And there you can get updates on any upcoming classes and workshops that I'll be having. I'll be having a movie poster art and design class in the near future. So if you want the latest updates and schedule on that, definitely subscribe. And also subscribers get uh, free lessons and downloads. I have a whole area of free resources that will help you draw better, help you uh, shade and help your color and painting as well. And once again, that URL is www dot drawwithchris.com slash subscribe and don't forget to like uh, and share this video with uh, with a friend who who needs um, some te techniques on how to get realistic shading with pen and marker so that's it for today until next time get out there keep drawing and build up that mileage bye for now